this is a very exciting area. Nobody's covering this stuff in the same way. Uh, we think it's very, very important. And most importantly, I actually think we've got six years before we have no idea what's about to happen because of the economic singularity. And this six years is the six years to make all our money. And if we don't, I think we're going to go into a world where we have no understanding of what it's about. Renowned macro analyst and prominent crypto enthusiast Raul Pal is exceedingly bullish on cryptocurrencies and tech stocks and believes that the digital assets industry presents a rare, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to all categories of investors. While other sound money advocates are preparing for the complete collapse of the global monetary system, PAL maintains that the next phase for the monetary system is already being developed, and our governments will be able to kick the can further down the road until it is fully developed and a smooth transition occurs. PAL's Exponential Age Thesis is based on rapid technological advancements, especially in the fields of robotics and artificial intelligence. According to PAL, the world's severe debt problem is worsened by the aging population and reduced productivity. We are simply not producing enough to assimilate the massive debt load naturally. This is where PAL believes AI and robotics come in, changing the entire GDP formula by bringing in infinite productive units and exponentially increasing productivity. In his words, AI infinitely scales knowledge, and robotics infinitely scales physical work. As a result, PAL believes the productivity boost we will get from the exponential age will solve the debt crisis and significantly increase GDP growth, eliminating the need for a global collapse. However, he warns that the world will still be completely different from what we know today, which is why PAL insists that we have only six years to make the most of the opportunity the cryptocurrency industry presents. During a recent discussion alongside David Matin and Imran Laka on the Real Vision YouTube channel, PAL gives an important crypto market update and discusses the future of artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence, AGI. As we bring you clips from the video, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thank you, and enjoy the video. If we think that liquidity is the biggest driver of risk assets, and particularly growth assets, crypto and tech are growth assets. If you remember, they led the cycle because they're driven by liquidity and not the business cycle itself, which is what drives stuff like the Russell 2000 or oil companies or gold miners. They're all driven by the business cycle. And we see that right now the ISM is struggling to turn higher, and then we'll have an up cycle and those stocks, those cyclical stocks will do well. But technology way leads that by over a year. It's liquidity in the US at its simplest level is driven by, it's called Fed net liquidity. It's driven by the balance sheet. Is it rising or falling? Well, right now they're doing QT. So they're taking liquidity out of the system, but that's offset with the reverse repo. They've been draining that. That money goes into the market, into the short end of the bond market. That's been adding liquidity and that more than offset the Fed. Then there's Janet Yellen and her checkbook, the Treasury General account. That's her current account. And we had this liquidity withdrawal from the system based on the fact that there was a reasonably big tax season because the economy grew reasonably well last year. Those taxes come out of money market funds and go into Jan Janet's checking account. So they're now not able to be used because Janet's not spending it yet. So that money comes out of the system. That's a liquidity withdrawal. Okay, so that's what was driving tech down and crypto down. Then what happened yesterday is two important factors. One is Jay Powell said, hey, listen, guys, we're not quite ready to cut rates yet. We're definitely not going to raise them, though, but we're going to do less quantitative tightening, but a lot less, from 60 billion down to 25 billion. So that's a, if you think of quantitative tightening as the Fed putting its head on the beach ball, you take it off, it, it rises. He's allowing liquidity to come. On the other side, Ellen said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy back some of these liquid bonds at the long end of the bond market. Those are liquid bonds. That's just a recycling of liquidity into a less liquid part, but it's adding liquidity into the system. So both of them signaled, we want to add liquidity here. So that was good. The Japanese intervened. They are selling dollars, selling of dollars, intervention of liquidity. So there was a lot of liquidity came back in. And the point being is what we saw with the markets drawing down was liquidity coming out. What happened today and yesterday in crypto, it kind of figured this out immediately, was liquidity is coming back. So that's really the big driver here. As I've said in the everything code work is all of the central banks have to fund their government's debts 
and they all have to work together mm -hmm. and they all have to get interest rates lower and they all have to put liquidity in because if not, the numbers don't work. And so that is the game that's actually at play here. Everything else is basically noise. It is a popular and uncontested fact that the global monetary system is unsustainable and tethering on the edge of complete collapse. Financial analysts, economists, and sound money advocates from both sides agree that the global debt load has become too massive and the fiat system will someday become obsolete. PAL believes the only viable solution to this global problem is increased productivity, which can be scaled exponentially with AI and robotics. A recent post made by the former Goldman Sachs executive on social media platform X reads, my job as a macro analyst and entrepreneur is to live in the future and assess how the world might look and a probabilistic path to get there. In the next six years, I believe we will see artificial general intelligence, AGI models, accelerating in power and collapsing in costs. We will hit a golden age of technology productivity where infinite knowledge workers, artificial intelligence, enter the economy. What does an economy even look like in that world? What is GDP? What if someone trains AGI on global markets? They theoretically will capture all the value. What if everyone begins using AGI models to build businesses? The velocity of business formation and destruction will be unprecedented. During the discussion with Matin and Laka, the Real Vision CEO further describes what's coming and the importance of preparing now by investing in cryptocurrencies. Here are more clips from the interview. I've explained to many people that GDP growth is driven by population growth, productivity growth, and debt growth. Debt growth stopped in 2008. It's now just repayments of old debts. Population growth is slowing down or shrinking across the entire Western world, plus Southeast Asia, plus China. So we've got slowing growth. We've got massive debts. That's the big problem we're in. And they've been debasing currency to deal with it. But we have AI, which is infinite human mind knowledge. David writes about this a lot. It's going to be knowledge is going to be like water. It's going to be free and ubiquitous. The robots, whether it's Optimus, whether it's Figure, whether it's whatever else Amazon is using, are going to be everywhere. A Tesla, after all, is just a robot, a car robot with AI in it. What that means is you have infinite population growth in an economy. Infinite population growth means what the hell does that mean to GDP growth? And if you lower the cost of electricity that we talked about earlier, you increase productivity growth. So you start to get bananas outcomes with the economy. What happens when AGI comes, the all-seeing, all-knowing AI? What are financial markets at that point? Surely the AGI just wins all financial markets. What job does Imran, myself, David have in that world? We don't. What, is it, what does it mean for your investments? What does it mean to run a company when everybody can just copy your business using an AI or an AGI instantaneously? When you can say, hey, look at this website, repeat that, it'll do it. Why do we even need humans to make the decisions when you just give the AI the role, hey, you're an AGI, figure out how to make money, right? It's so complicated, and this is coming really fast. By 2030, I think we're coming into a world that nobody understands, and economic models will not work anymore. I don't even know what money is in a world of infinite abundance. Now, I'm not saying 2030 is a doom date. It'll be a process by which we get there. But by 2030, things are going to start feeling really, really weird. And we won't know why the economy is growing so fast, but jobs aren't growing. Why the economy is growing so fast, but something's not happening right with companies. Why, why, why do things feel dislocated? This is what is to come. And I think we've got six years to make as much money as possible so we can just observe it from the beach drinking a cocktail and not try and scrap it out. Your kids are digital. They come from a digital world. They are more adaptable than we all are. We're more under threat than your kids or your kids in Iran who will just grow up knowing nothing different. So mm -hmm. I don't worry about that. It's the swathe of Gen Xers who kind of get lost out in the cracks here and the older millennials who can't really adapt anymore. Um, that, it's, gonna, it's not going to feel good. On the other hand, the economy is going to be booming. And maybe the stock market's booming. And, you know, but in the, in the interim, this six years, we can all make money out of this, whether it's crypto, whether it's technology, there's going to be a way to make an extraordinary amount of money out of the biggest technological change in all humanity. So let's just do that. We can worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. I'd rather worry about it on the beach than worry about it in some cubicle office at an insurance company in Ohio. Pal's thesis for the coming exponential age of technological advancements is quite similar to Kathy Wood's. According to the ARK Invest founder and CEO, 
the global equity market cap of five disruptive innovations will go from $19 trillion to over $220 trillion by 2030. Like PAL, Cathy estimates that artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, robotics, genomic sequencing, and energy storage will help to significantly boost global GDP from the 3% average growth rate we've had over the past century to at least 8.5% after 2030. This is at a time when economists are predicting a lower 2.6% average growth rate for global GDP within the next few years. Cathy and Pal both believe the rapid development and convergence of these disruptive platforms will completely change the trajectory of the global economy. Do you agree with Pal's analysis that we can somehow find a way out without any lasting damage to the financial system? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.